What exactly is a Bitcoin? Bitcoin was introduced to the world as a concept in 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto. That's the inventor of Bitcoin, although it's actually a pseudonym. We don't know his real name, maybe her real name. The concept is that Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer payments function, skipping the need for an intermediary. Most transactions today require at least three parties, the buyer, the seller, and one or more intermediaries. Think about when you buy something online. You may deal with Amazon or eBay or Overstock or Walmart.com, but you also deal with a trusted third party for payments, like Visa, MasterCard, Venmo, PayPal. The idea of Bitcoin is that you could pay another party without going through a bank. This reduces friction, lowers costs, and provides anonymity. It works using a shared and mutually verifiable public ledger. In other words, the whole world can agree that a transaction has taken place, but without knowing who is doing it. And the transaction can take place without using money, at least not traditional money. The shared ledger is known as the blockchain. We can get into the specifics of that, but for now, just think of it as sort of a digital record that can be proven universally. Sort of like a permanent receipt that everybody agrees on. Bitcoin is released in a process known as mining. There's a limit to the total amount of Bitcoin that will ever be mined, and the process of mining requires solving increasingly complicated mathematical equations. This requires massive computer power and lots of electricity, but we're not going to get into the mining process, at least not in this episode, even though it has created some very interesting investment ideas. We may talk about mining investments at some point in the future, but for now, we're focused on Bitcoin as a payment mechanism and possibly an investment. You probably already know that Bitcoin is not the only cryptocurrency, but it's clearly the dominant one with more than two thirds of the total value. In a future episode, we may walk through all the varieties of cryptocurrency, but for now, let's focus on Bitcoin. And you should know that the first use of Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency was to buy two medium-sized pizzas on May 22nd, 2010. The developer paid 10,000 Bitcoin. That means that the pizzas cost about a quarter billion dollars a piece in given the recent Bitcoin price. Think about that, two medium pizza, pizzas for $500 million. Of course, Bitcoin was worth a whole lot less then. But the bottom line is that Bitcoin offers potential for use as a means of transaction. It may also prove to be a store of value, meaning that you can hold money in Bitcoin rather than dollars in a bank. Some view Bitcoin as an investment. Others view it as a volatile speculation. But what is abundantly clear, cryptocurrency in one form or another is here to stay and money will never be the same again. So let's walk through a Bitcoin transaction to better understand how it works. First, you need to get the Bitcoin. We'll tell you how to do this a little later in the show and also provide resource links in this episode's battle plan. And to get your Bitcoin, you'll need a wallet. We'll show you how to get one. But let's start with the assumption that you already have a wallet and you, it has one Bitcoin in it. Based on recent prices, you're pretty rich. So what do you want to do with your $50,000? Maybe you want to buy some pizza and you order one from Papa John's. They accept Bitcoin. Total cost is, let's say, $20. You'll need four ten thousandths of a Bitcoin to get your pizza. Now let's look at what happens. The Wall Street Journal did a good job of illustrating the transaction. Here are the steps. One, Papa John's would provide you a payment destination address. The payment destination address is published to the network for all to see on the blockchain. Three, you would then send Papa John's 0. 0.0004 Bitcoin using your wallet's private key. Four, the transactions confirmed, processed, and secured by the network and the blockchain. It then shows up in Papa John's wallet. Five, you get your pizza. I'm not sure at this point how you tip the delivery driver. Maybe you use old-fashioned cash, but that's basically it. You did not use a credit card or a check or even cash except for the tip. Welcome to the 21st century payment mechanism. The only problem you might have is wondering if you just gave away a potential fortune. 
There's no doubt that cryptocurrencies are real and will be part of whatever the next monetary system becomes. And there's no doubt that our current monetary system is under strain. In fact, we've explained many times on this program, the Chinese, the Russians, and even some Europeans do not want the U.S. dollar as the main mechanism for payments around the world. They want to replace the dollar. And when it's replaced, I'm sure a cryptocurrency will be at the heart of the new system.